Hi, I'm Mike with Utastic. I'm here again at SCNA. So I'm sitting down with Zach Dennis. Zach uh, has an interesting story. He's a contributing uh, author on the RSpec book, but he's also not on the RSpec team. So how in the world did you go from not being an RSpec team to contributing to the RSpec book? Um, well, a few years ago, um, I've been doing a lot of Rails development and uh, had really you know, kind of latched on to RSpec and its <laughs> philosophy. Uh, that kind of the language you use influences the way that you think about the world. Um, and I was just a very active community member mm-hmm. uh, on the RSpec mailing list yeah. um, in terms of how to apply uh, different testing practices with RSpec to you know, different parts of Rails applications. So you were looking at, you had to apply to RSpec, not so much like thinking about it, how the internals work, but like, how do I make it do what I need it to do? Yeah, yeah, and it was, it was still, testing in the Rails community was still pretty new. Um, and I was, I think, in at the right time to contribute a lot of ideas to the community. Um, and I think uh, David kind of saw that and at one point, you know, reached out and said, hey, I'm, I'm working on this book. I'd like to get finished. Right. Um, you know, we'd like to include a section on Rails. Would you be, you know, interested in, in contributing? Um, and then we kind of went from there. Yeah. So it's kind of interesting from his perspective that he didn't just uh, collaborate on the project and write the book as a band or anything. He sounds like he approached writing the book in the same way he approached working on our spec, but it was a collaboration in that you know, many many hands uh, make there. You got a, a good stew. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm re- reaching for a, 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 an analogy here, but uh, so it was like he was very welcoming of contributors, even people who weren't necessarily going to write a new test assertion uh, example a library or something. Well, at that time, that was before RSpec 2 came out, and before I think RSpec really got the refactoring that David had wanted to put into it. To now, there's several projects, you know, RSpec Expectation, Monix Core, um, all of those things. Um, so RSpec was still like a model of the code base um, at the time, and and I think that he may have been actually like the, the maintainer and the only core committer at oh. the time. He had brought in patches, but I think it's more recent that uh, more people have been brought in, um, kind of as core committers to RSpec. But when he actually started the book, um, not to give too much information away, sure. um, he actually didn't start the book. Mm-hmm. It actually had started before he took over our spec. Okay. Um, at least the idea did. And then when he became the uh, maintainer and kind of the author of the R spec as we know it today, um, you know, he was kind of leading the charge with this book. Um, and it was it was a lot of work, took a lot of time, and I think that's you know my impression is that's when he reached out to people in the community, people he respected, um, and delegated more. Yeah, and, and he, he had his, uh, he looked over the you know the entire thing, so it wasn't that each person kind of did their own thing and then that was it. You know, David was definitely the, the consistent voice and theme throughout the entire book. It was his book, um, but everyone else uh, you know, definitely contributed ideas in, in large sections uh, to their respective parts. Right. And what was, what was your section again? Um, I worked heavily on the, the Rails section. Okay, the Rails integration or... Or just I think the, the last section of the book is just kind of our spec and Rails. Right. Um, and it walks through uh, kind of outside them using Cucumber and WebRat. And, mm-hmm. and Brian Hump can actually work primarily on those. And then, uh, and then it got into uh, you know views, models, controllers, helpers. Um, and, and those were the, the chapters and sections that I really focused on. Because what I think is really interesting about your story is that it's not necessarily uh, the person who the, th- the, the thing that makes these projects good and it makes them community projects is it isn't just contributions to the code or to tests or to docs. It's sometimes it's ideas that are fresh or, or ways of looking at, at the way it's being used and being able to articulate that back to the person who's creating it. So it, it, it has kind of a, a, a life cycle. It comes out of this person creating it and then you feed back into them so that way they can adjust or uh, and then there's a lot of ways to use our spec, and it's impossible for one person to be intimately familiar with all of those different mm-hmm. contexts where you use a tool like our spec. Um, and, and, and I think that's one of the reasons why uh, David probably reached out to myself and to Brian, um, was that we had been doing a lot of Rails work. Mm-hmm. And I don't know at the time uh, you know, where David was in terms of our spec and Rails, um, but we had been doing a lot of that. Brian and I had. Um, so I thought that you know that was something that we were able to, to bring to the community and, and bring to the book. Okay. Well, thank you very much for taking the time yeah. to sit down with me. Thank, thank you. you.